Welcome back, amigos. You're on Maria. I'm your host, Maria Cardona, and I'm here with my co-host, Brenda Gonzalez, the co-creator and host of Tamarindo Podcast. And we are thrilled to welcome to the show U.S. Representative for New Mexico's 3rd Congressional District, Congressman Ben Ray Lujan. Congressman Lujan, thank you so much for being here on Maria. We really appreciate you. Uh, it's always an honor, Maria, and thank you so much for always keeping the country informed, and uh, you do it in such an inspirational way. So it's always an honor to be with you. Congressman, I've known you for some time, and we've worked on these issues of environmental justice, so I know how strongly you feel about these and how passionate you are. Talk to us a little bit about the Hispanic Caucus's Green Economy and Renewal Energy Task Force and what it's doing. Absolutely, Maria. Well, you can see behind me, I'm, I'm here joining you from Nam Ben, New Mexico, uh, which is my home. I'm a fourth generation on this little bitty farm here. And my grandfather and my grandmother, Celedon and Estora, they taught me to leave things better than we found them. We grew up taking mm -hmm. care of this land and this acequia. It's a little waterway right behind me underneath that cottonwood. This is a part of who mm -hmm. I am, and it's been a part of my upbringing. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus has been a leader when it comes to climate advocacy, uh, ensuring that communities have access to clean air, clean water, um, so many important issues that impact and touch our lives. Um, so the Congressional Hispanic Caucus has led on efforts um, in the area specifically around environmental justice. And in so many communities across America, uh, we see how communities of color have been left behind or have not been prioritized, mm -hmm. whether you live in rural parts of the country like me, or you live in urban settings in the biggest cities in America. This touches every corner of the country. Um, and so there are many legislative initiatives. Um, so whether we're advocating for a change in the law, we're mm -hmm. protecting public lands and we're protecting our waterways across the United States of America, advocating for all of our brothers and sisters, fellow Americans um, on the territories um, in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands and Guam, mm -hmm. American Samoa, or we're making sure that organizations, strong environmental organizations are also diversifying their boards and their CEOs and yeah. who they have at the table. Um, so there's a score in each and every measure. We all have a responsibility to do something to hold everyone accountable, including ourselves. I think this is such important work, uh, Congressman Lujan, especially now, as you know, you've been living this and you've been fighting against it. The Trump administration's aggressive rollback of environmental regulations how is that affecting New Mexico and the country? And how can we speak up to make sure that it stops? There was a recent decision by the Trump administration that I had been very concerned with. Well, President Trump rolled back protections for methane emissions. Now, for those of you that don't know much about this, where there's oil and gas uh, generation across America, um, methane is a natural gas. But what happens with a lot of these facilities across the country is they intentionally flare out that methane or they have leaks on old facilities so it's leaking out. Recently, Maria, we, um, as a Congressional Hispanic Caucus, myself, Raul Grijalva, and several of the members, they came to New Mexico with Congresswoman Deb Holland, who's one of the first two Native American women elected to the Congress. And we went mm -hmm. out to the Navajo Nation to one of these generation sites. And as soon as you get there, you can smell the methane. I mean, it's clear what you're smelling. Mm -hmm but never before had I been able to see it. Some of the groups that were with us actually had technology that allowed us to look through these cameras where you could see these methane plumes. And they were as far as the eye could see, bigger than clouds that were coming over the skies above us. It, it was devastating. And in proximity to where all this happens, people live. The animals that they raise, whether it's their pets or animals like sheep or cattle or chickens, they're all there breathing this in, and it's making them sick, high rates of asthma. So this is just another example where there was a bipartisan effort across America. Democrats and Republicans came together. Even the oil and gas industry was working with environmental organizations and stewards to reduce and eliminate methane emissions in America. And then President Trump comes through and just completely eliminates all the good work that's been done. It's just one example where this president is letting down the people all across America. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about 
what's at stake when you think about the environment and some of the progress that was made by the Hispanic Caucus and others if Trump gets reelected? From a climate perspective, um, look, where I was born and raised here in Nambe, um, my little community is nestled between Nambe Pueblo and Pawake Pueblo, two indigenous communities here in New Mexico and across America. I'm proud to represent 17 of New Mexico's 23 tribes. My Native American mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, they always remind me that what's at stake is Mother Earth. We have an important responsibility to care for her. Um, she provides for all of us the good and the health of our communities. And in a state like New Mexico, where we experience drought conditions unlike most other states, um, we are feeling this right now. Farmers and ranchers around me yeah. have been reaching out because of the concern that they have because there's no water flowing, there's been no rain. And all those gardens that we plant, uh, many of us grew up as self-sustenance farmers. What we're raising, we're feeding our families with. And then we're canning it and jarring it and we save it in our dispensas. We, or we dig a hole in the ground and you know you build a little room that stays nice and cool and you keep your food for the winter. Mm -hmm. All of that is at stake right now. And that's just one example of a microcosm of what's happening across the United States of America. Congressman, I am so excited that you are here. Amigos, we'll be back with more from Congressman Ben Ray Lujan. No se me vayan, this is Maria. Welcome back, amigos. You're on Maria. I'm your host, Maria Cardona, and I'm here with my co-host, Brenda Gonzalez, and we are welcoming back Congressman Ben Ray Lujan. Congressman, you were talking about the importance of environmental justice in New Mexico, but what is its significance to the rest of the country? We're all connected. And even yeah. me living out in a rural little community in the mountains of northern New Mexico, that I have so much in common with our brothers and sisters down in Florida or New York or in Iowa. I don't want to speak states because I'm going to leave someone out and get in trouble. You get where I'm going with this. <laughs> but it's not just Absolutely. those of us that are connected in the states. This is around the world, and it's why we should all care about one another. In the same way that we're seeing those environmental injustices with the pollution, with the high rates of asthma, with those smokestacks mm -hmm. that often are in those communities where it's people of color that live in the cities, um, the same thing happens out in the rural parts of the country. That's where those smokestacks get put. And, and people that are able right. to live there, it's you buy the land you can afford. Well, what happens is you start getting sick. So if we're not able to do something around controlling pollution, eliminating pollution, getting to net zero emissions across America and around the world, our families are going to continue to get sick. Latinos are going to continue to have high rates of asthma. Our African-American brothers and sisters, our Native American brothers and sisters that live in proximity to these high uh, prone areas of pollution are going to continue to get sick. So we're all connected and we need to understand that. The only way we're going to get this done is by each taking a step. And when we take that step together, the world's going to feel it. But that also begins mm -hmm. with what's coming in November. Who's at the table matters. Whether we're talking about diversity with environmental organizations to make sure that our communities are represented or who's in the White House. And with this president that's in the White House right now, he's not even letting federal agencies talk about climate crisis, about drought conditions, about these effects. They have to scrub their words. As a matter of fact, the national laboratories, the Department of Energy that oversees these uh, complexes across America, they can't talk about climate change. They have to use the word resiliency because if they come out and say they get in trouble with the president, that's not leadership. That's neglect. Yeah, we could draw a lot of hope from Generation Z. There's a lot of young leaders, and I love that you talk about representation. Mm -hmm. And I think now there's a little bit more uh, recognition that there should be uh, young people of color that should be leading this. Can you talk a little bit more about what you mean by a seat at the table? Whoever's at the table is making the decisions, whether it's in the household. For me, it was our mom. My mom was the, the, I sat at the head of the household for the important family conversations. It was always around a meal and it was a family gathering, and who was at the table mattered. If someone from the family chose not to be there that night, whatever decision we made, they were going to have to deal with, right? If you're not at the table, mm -hmm. you're not helping to drive the conversation. The same holds true in the Congress um, with CEOs, with corporations, with the presidency, with environmental advocacy groups. It's why we need more and more young people, especially people of color. You're, you have more courage than anyone that I've known. And it's contagious. 
But we need that action to where you're serving in public as well, that public service that you have in your heart. Run for office. Get involved with these organizations. But that's why being at the table matters so much. Your voice is going to represent everyone that you grew up with, everyone that you learned from. And it's incumbent upon you to make sure you're conveying that and being at the table is the way to do it. And isn't one of the most important ways to be at that table, Congressman, is to make sure that we all vote in November? As you know, Latinos are going to be the biggest ethnic voting bloc in the country at 32 million eligible voters. But I am still so concerned that we're not going to show up in the numbers that we can represent. What, what would you tell Latinos who are watching you right now why it's important to show up? Why are you going to give your voice to someone else? You know, when we're together around a meal with the family, my, my brothers and sisters speak up. But if one of them decides not to vote, it's, it's like it's going to fall on de dead ears, right? It's not even a question of are you going to? It's when are you going to vote? What's your plan to vote? What's the plan for your family to vote? And especially now with COVID, we got to keep safe, right? So get that plan together for the mail-in voting as well. That's a way to stay safe. It's a way to make sure you're going to get that yeah. ballot passed and start thinking about that. Put your plan together because we don't know what this president's up to. Put your plan together, make sure you're going to vote, and then make sure you make that you get your friends to vote and your families to vote. It's not good enough just for you to vote. We need everyone showing up this year. Congressman, I couldn't have said it better myself. Bien dicho. Thank you so much for coming on, Maria, to talk about the importance of what you're doing and to talk about how we can all help you and get involved to make sure that this country and our community goes in the right direction. Muchas gracias for being on, Maria. No, Maria, gracias para ti también. And thank you for letting me share a little bit of New Mexico with that audience you have across America. You're welcome to come on down to New Mexico, everyone. We want you to come down and check it out. Muchas gracias. When we come back, Brenda and I are going to reflect and dissect the conversations and the interviews that we just had. No se me vayan. This is Maria. Maria.